Welcome to Garden Theory. Today I have a pretty fun episode to go over with you guys. We're going to be looking at a an art book created by a community for a YouTuber called Good Times with Scar. We're going to be reviewing this really fun art book that his community made over one of his recent creations that he did on a Minecraft server called uh, Hermitcraft. And one of the projects that, uh, that he did um, he always wanted to be an Imagineer at Disney, but due to some health problems, um, he's pretty wheelchair confined, and I'm not 100% familiar on what kind of health problems he does have, but he decided to try to create his own version of Disneyland called Scarland, and today we're going to go look at this art book that his community made based off of that project, and so we're going to go look at that. We may hop on on the world download that they released a few months ago and take a look at it. Uh, but basically we're going to be talking about some of my thoughts on the landscape design of Scarland, uh, some of the landscape designs that are in this art book, which they're pretty good. Everything on here is fan made, not affiliated with Good Times of Scar, which is something that his community created to uh, celebrate his project. We're going to pop on and take a look at it and hopefully you like today's video. I'm just going to be trying out different types of videos like this in the future, but in general we're going to always be talking about landscape design, gardening, um, any of those uh, topics. So if you'd like to see that in the future for me, and if you like today's video, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and comment any of your thoughts. Alright, so this is the art book that was created by the uh, community that follows uh, Good Times of Scar. So this is called the Art of Scarland. So the main mascot of Scarland is his pet cat, Jelly. He recently passed away. Uh, but this is a really fun art book showcasing the project in Minecraft and a more uh, artistic, uh, realist depictions. So we're going to take a look at some of the fun landscape, uh, some of the landscape design drawings that are on here. And we'll stop at this image. This is kind of just the... Uh, the menu, uh, you know, when you're looking at what where everything is, you know, like the park map. And one thing that I do like about the overall design of the park is that everything terrain-wise points you to the castle. And having that main street there in the middle where the uh, visibility will be more open is going to help frame that castle when you're down here in the street. So I think that's very good. I think the buildings do a good job of blocking the two main uh, rides areas so that so each place kind of feels distinct so I think that's a really good use of the space and so here this is just what I was talking about when you're down here on the main street you have a really good view of the castle in that direction so it helps to frame it so there's some of the artistic drawings of the architecture that they did for the part turning what was in Minecraft into a more like if it was a real life project. So it looks really cool. So here's another landscape design drawing. I think this is of the main plaza, possibly when you enter the park. And I think overall they did a really good job. Most of the landscape design here I think is going to be more of a formal arrangement, which I think works for a park. It's kind of what you need to do, keep things clean and organized. So everything is symmetrical down the middle right there. And so when you walk into the park, you know, everything is the same on both sides roughly. There's a good use of the trees next to the flagpole. I think that looks really nice as a centerpiece for that. Here's some more of the buildings. Um, I really like this piece. Um, it's showing one frame of a thing, but it's showing it in three different seasons, which I think is good to plan for when you're doing landscape design, how it's going to look in the summer, the spring, and the winter. So I think that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. So here's a fun interior landscape design. Most of these, I would assume, are probably going to be fake plants, since it looks like this is for a cafe slash bookshop. So I don't really want to deal with too many live plants indoors. So most of this is like garland on the rails, probably fake plants up there on that ceiling loft. I mean, there could be some real plants. These ones in the pots kind of look like they may be more real, but overall a really good sense of a green space indoors. Yeah, it's a really pretty garland underneath the stairs on this picture. Here's another good one. So this is showcasing some different path designs in the park. Um, and I think a lot of times uh, paths go a little unnoticed in landscape design, but it's always okay to experiment with different path styles. A lot of times you can make a big impact on just what type of path that you have. So this one with the stone pavers or bricks, I think this is a really good example of something you could do in a residential setting 
where you have the border being one type of paver and then the inside being a lighter color paver. And that really helps create a bit of pop in your landscape design. And then these two are two variants of some stone paths, which is a nice more informal style of pathing, which I really like. So these are some banner designs and trash can designs for the park, as well as different benches and lighting features, which are still part of landscape design. That's something you want to consider, especially when you're figuring out what kind of theme or fill do you want to have for your landscape. Do you want something that's more kind of formal Victorian style like these lanterns? Do you want a more fancy bench or do you want something more casual sitting area? So these are all things you need to think about when you're doing your landscape design. So I think these are all really good bench and lighting fixture designs. Yeah, that's a really pretty overview. So this is the landscaping section of the book. So we should be able to find some pretty good stuff here. So we have some toperaries, which toperaries work really good in a formal design. Um, you can create these really fun shapes like they've done here. Uh, the only thing with toperaries is it takes a lot of maintenance to keep them in that form. So if you want something like this in your own space, keep in mind that's going to be a lot of uh, weekly trimming to keep these in shape. Yeah, and they even write the, the shrub. These are usually done with boxwoods. So here's some of the of the decorated pots that they'll have in this amusement park. Uh, these are all really good. I like the cat sleeping in this one. I like the cat one right there. I think out of all of these, I don't know which one would be my favorite. I kind of like this one on the left the most. Yeah, these are all really good. And we have indoor plant decorations, all these different pots. And uh, they're doing a good job showing what it would look like in the winter as well, with the snow on top of the dead branches. So I think that's a good highlight to have. Yeah, these all look really good. All right, so here's some more fun landscape designs. So this is one of the main entrance to the parks. A lot of annual beds. Um, here's another... Landscape design showing a bed in different seasons. This looks like maybe a pot, but it could be a tree with some bushes. Yeah, all these are very solid. Yeah, these all look really good. Yeah, and I think experimenting with different drawings, even if your drawing skills aren't to this really beautiful level, um, it's still a good idea to roughly measure out how your space is going to flow together before you uh, start putting things in the ground. So having things like this really helps you to get a better picture of your space. So here's a, a proper landscape design here. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. Yeah, this is a really pretty one. So this is a, you can think of it as a vertical slice in the landscape if you're looking at it dead on. Um, doing this type of style is really good, especially if you have elevation differences. Helps to showcase where things are going to be higher or lower in the landscape that you can't quite get from a top-down look like this. And so looking at this, we know that either this might be a road or a path is the lowest thing in this landscape. So it just helps to showcase that. Yeah, they did a really good job. They even labeled all the plants in this. So we have coral bells, we have yarrow. Looks like these trees in the back are oaks with some sedge underneath them. And then these flowers in front are more coral bells and blue chalk sticks. I'm not actually sure what that is. Let's see what that is. Looks like it's a succulent. Okay. Yeah, that, that can work depending on the climate, of course. Looks like they did a lot of coral bells in this one. Um, they did some hyacinths. So coral bells, if you don't know what those are, they're really good uh, perennial. They come in lots of colors. They're one of my favorites. They create really pretty flowers. Um, typically, they're more of a shade plant, so I'd be a little hesitant to do them in a full sun location like that. But, uh, but yeah, they're a really good flower. So, uh, obviously the main theme in this one is a lot of pinks and purples. But yeah, that looks really good. Let's see what kind of tree. Yoshino cherry. Yeah, real pretty cherry tree. So yeah, overall really good. Here, let's zoom back out. There we go. Here's another landscape design. I think this is of a different plaza. Let's take a look at it. So again, this is our... If we're looking at it dead on from the side, this is what the landscape design will look like. Overall, a really formal and symmetrical design. So on this one, they didn't label the trees in this one, but we can probably assume they're oak trees like the other design. So this one, we have some azaleas. We have some sedum ground cover, more coral bells. In the middle, we have California poppies. 
We have Field Sedge under the Oaks, which I think is a really good one. We have some Cypresses. We have Lemongrass and some Lilies. So yeah, overall, real pretty landscape. I think this would look really good. I think whoever made this landscape design did a really good job detailing these trees. I think that looks really good. Makes me want to do something like this. This looks really pretty. And then here is an artistic interpretation of that space from these designs. So pretty similar. I don't think these were included in the design. That might be part of the path down there. But overall, you can kind of get a sense for the space. We have this tiered flower bed in the middle with the walkways. We have the two cherry trees on each side. So it's kind of capturing this space. Yeah, it's super pretty. So here's the main castle, obviously themed after the Disney castle. So this is going into some of the rides, um, some of the uh, the drinks and uh, food treats that they have, which this is really fun. I like the people who make this stuff. It looks really good. Yeah, all the different treats you can get. Uh, merchandise, the balloons. That's a really cute picture. <laughs> yeah, all super good stuff. Yeah, more merchandise. Let's see if we have anything else. So this is good. It showcases some of the uh, the workers that would be used to maintain this park. So we have the gardeners here cleaning up the gardening space. And just like I said, with these topiaries, it's going to be constant sharing. And with all the trees, especially like oak trees, they're going to be dropping leaves and sticks quite a bit. So that's why they're raking them up. Yeah, this is really fun. This is pretty much what my job is, <laughs> working in the gardens. There we go. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be it. Don't know if there's any other landscape designs. Yeah, I think that's it. So, yeah, I hope y'all like that. So, unfortunately, my audio was bad, so I'm re, re uh, recording over these lines. Um, but essentially, we went to Scarland. Uh, we got our VIP ticket and gave it to the ticket man, and we walked into the park. Um, we first looked at the first plaza. And we looked at the flagpole and appreciated some of the really pretty buildings that they had in Scarland. Um, overall, they did a really good job. And then we went over to the main plaza, looked at some of the beautiful cherry trees that they had, as well as the uh, statue of Scar and Jelly, his cat, which is the main mascot of Scarland. Overall, I really appreciated the beautiful details and the landscape design that he did in these plazas. He did a really good job of creating a beautiful sense of space, as well as setting up the frame for the castle that we're going to head over to next. But yeah, we'll, we'll just take off, look at the castle from above. It looks so cool. Yeah, he did a great job on this castle. But yeah, this is Scarland. It's really cool. Uh, you can get a really good sense of the landscape design by coming up here at this height. So when we were looking at that top-down drawing, this is the pers let me get. I guess we can only go this far up before we hit a cloud, but this is the top-down view. And yeah, it looks amazing. So he was able to do part of the jungle area. He wasn't able to complete the sci-fi area yet, so that's where those would have gone. But this is the main street. Yeah, this looks so good. Yeah, and this is the other thing that we saw. This plaza here looks really good. And then we can show you the uh, back this way is where the uh, landscapers and and people would work at. So these are all the garages and buildings. All the uh, this is the back side of Scarland for all the facility services, trash cans, all their offices right here, and service vehicles. So I'm glad that he planned that in, showcasing the teams that it takes to maintain spaces like this. It takes a lot of people. Yeah, and he's even got trains being worked on, all sorts of cool stuff. I think that'll be it for today. <laughs> oh, it's so laggy. There's so much stuff here. It takes a lot out of my computer. So that is going to be it for today's episode. I hope you like this little tour of this really fun project that Good Times of Scar did, creating his own amusement park called Scarland. And I hope you like the, uh, the fan community base around his channel that created the fun art book about this park. 
um, really shows you a lot of the cool things that you can accomplish with these really positive and supportive online communities. Um, really enjoyed looking at some of the landscape designs in the art book as well in person in Minecraft. I think he did a great job on creating some really pretty formal uh, plazas for his park. Really like these uh, custom cherry trees that he did, as well as, as the other oaks and cypress trees and the topiaries. All of them are very solid, and it shows you that you can create landscape design in many medias and fashions. Definitely recommend, if you've never tried this style of landscape design before, to give it a try and see what you can come up with. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful, talented people that create uh, amazing giant projects like this. But you can start off small. Um, that's why I like about Minecraft. It's a really simple game, uh, very simple mechanics that anyone can do. Definitely takes a lot of time, especially if you're doing something like this. I think he worked on this for like almost two years. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff. If you like this type of content, um, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought about my thoughts about the landscape design or anything that you liked that I didn't mention. And let me know if you would like for me to look at more art books, uh, specifically with landscape design, landscape art books, or tour more places like this in the future. Let me know in the comments of any recommendations you have. I think our video next week is going to be more of a typical video. I want to go visit the Compton Gardens in Bentonville. Um, and give you my thoughts about Neil Compton and his legacy and the gardens that they have there at his home in Bentonville. So that's probably what we're going to do next week. But I hope you liked today's video. Let me know if you would like to see more of this video in the future in the comments. And if you liked today's video, feel free to subscribe. Helps uh, to make the channel grow. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week. And thank you for watching Garden Theory. See ya. Mm -hmm.